Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming to this 12th show and to this last talk on Saturday. Um, this, this is a great celebration of the independent sector and independent schooling, but that's not to say we should be complacent. So it's, it's time to do a, a bit of sort of metaphorical kicking of feet through stained glass windows in, in, in one sense and ask whether or not schools, that, that many of them exhibiting today, really do prepare children for what's to come. We, we, we can't be futurologists, we don't know what the, the future holds, but it, it certainly is the case that the pace of change is highly rapid and will probably only get faster. Meanwhile, schools are doing a very interesting job, a, a very good job. They're the ha happiest places I've, I've seen for, for many decades. and they've, they've really reinvented themselves in the last 20 years. So this is, this is a positive story. I'm very grateful to Dr. Wallace Steiner for coming today. Uh, what's very impressive about Anson, if I can call you Anson, keep this in, informal as well as infernal a little bit, I think, is, is that in addition to being headmaster of Stowe for nearly 15 years, he has another life as, as being um, a trustee of the Tate, and he's extremely involved in a charity which I hope he's going to tell us a little bit about during the talk. Uh, Lord Palumbo, James Palumbo, uh, when I had a conversation with, with James a, a few months ago about schools, I, I was so impressed about what he said, and he had the same clarity and a direct delivery that I've seen with Anthony, that I thought it would be very uh, interesting to put them together. James does amazing things in Southwark and has done for uh, some years now with, with the Ministry of Sound, your, your is it pop, and, pop and roll music, music publishing. He's also a great uh, expert on classical music. Um, meanwhile, uh, from his Ducal Palace in, in Buckinghamshire, we have Dr. Wallace Steiner doing some very interesting things in education. So I think putting these two together is, is going to be quite entertaining, to say the least. Anthony talked about what not to look for. That's how he started his talk, yeah? And then he gave a list of what to look for. And I'm really interested in all your views on this, because for me, the single most important thing about a kid and going to school is teaching them about reality and the real world. And of course, there are duns and other things, and there are educational points, and there are character points, and there are, but for me, it's about living in the real world and showing them. Now, what do people, well, let's have a show of hands. Do people broadly agree, broadly agree? Hands up who thinks that's more or less right. So I'd say uh, a good 50% of the audience, yeah, yeah. So if that is right, if we're, what we're looking for is reality, then the question, with a great respect, about whether we need to teach uh, whether schools teach kids about commercial road world is slightly off beam because what I think schools really need to do is teach people about reality, whether that's the commercial world or something else. Because the commercial world, which for me implies making money, it is important to some, but not to a lot of others. Uh, we're all going to die. Money is great, but actually, the purpose of life is meaning, isn't it? So. Um, with the idea of reality in mind, and that word, and the real word, I took a look at your website this morning. And I was looking for real world, and reality, and anything that would be around that theme. And I was also, ob obversely, looking for cliché and nonsense, and words which were far removed from reality. And there were a couple of things I noticed that I want to challenge Antti on in here. I'm sure he'll, he'll bash me down. The first kid is leaving. Uh, each boy and girl is treated as an individual. For me, that's quite an obvious point. A growth mindset philosophy on education. You can tell us what that is in a moment. Pupils develop a lasting sense of moral, social, and spiritual responsibility. Again, I'm going to challenge Anthony on that. Now, it's all very well for me to be standing here talking about reality and poking a bit of fun at Anthony and some of the words on his website. But I just think, if I had the task of being a headmaster, yeah, what would I write on my website? What would I, can I presumptuously have a go? I woke oh, up God. this morning and presumptuously had a go. I saw this wonderful stuff about a ducal palace and 750 acres and these, these Greek temples they've got and these rolling lawns, and this is my 
Stowe website. Ready? Don't be fooled by the Ducal Palace or our rolling lawns, lakes, and luscious landscapes. This isn't reality. Reality is the cold, hard world of global competition, brutal technology, and 14-hour workdays. We understand reality, and at Stowe, we prepare your kid for it. This is what we do. Day one, the headmaster sits with all new joiners and explains what it costs to send you to this school. NI, other taxes, what the cost of your school fees per term is. And then we juxtapose that against the jobs market, average wages, and we ask you, do you think you'll be able to afford to send your kid to school without your parents' help? No pocket money. Everything is earned. Gardening, building, other chores. All cleaning, including the toilets, washing up laundry, is done by the kids. All sponsor a pen pal, animal or cause, and get immersively involved, demonstrating continuous interest and progress. All kids have holiday jobs for 50% of their holidays. Money goes, to sponsor their, uh, goes on their sponsorship program. Weekly classes on what's going on on the west coast of America and immersive planning for US and, uh, uni entry. Weekly classes on what the Chinese are doing to take over the world. The work ethic and ingenuity of Indians, Israelis and other global competitors. Career planning from the get-go. Everything is decided through this prism. Subjects taken, holiday work, work experience, uni entry. Kids can pivot, but the process is ongoing, rigorous and continuously assessed. A total focus on vocational training. We scratch humanities, rubbish courses like media studies in favour of maths, sciences, engineering and things to do with your hands. No smartphones in school. Stowe is a reality cold bath. We hit your kids' entitled attitude full on, including them making them clean the bathtub. If you want to prepare your kid for the real world, send them to Stowe. So, Charles, for me, the question moves from do public schools prepare your kids sufficiently for the commercial world more to how can your kids transcend the disadvantages of going to public schools in order to find and live in reality? I mean, yes, James, we are all going to be dead, but let's, there has to be something beyond the self, beyond the now, a sense of the other, a sense of the transcendent, a sense of the numinous. After all, what's tomorrow all about? Remembrance Sunday, if it's not about remembering something spiritual, something about sacrifice. So I think it's a bit insulting to the memory of people who have laid down their lives to say that the spiritual is not important in our schools. Uh, four, cost. Um, you'll be pleased to know I'm still a teacher. I, I think headmasters who do not teach are abrogating responsibility. I teach, uh, I'm a historian, I'm an art historian. Um, I'm still quite engaged in the so-called real world. Um, you know, I, I was a, a trustee of the Tate. I'm a chair of a charity. I spent, last year, I spent some time in Afghanistan auditing our schools. This year, this summer, I was in Nepal. I, I think we work quite hard as a charity. One of the very first things that I say in my lessons is um, I ask the children, how much does it cost to send you to Stowe? What is the cost? It's about 37, 38,000 for boarding, add it all up with extras, about 40,000. Then I break it down. How much does that cost a day? It's about 140 pounds. Then we break that down. If you wanted to spend a night in the Best Western in Buckingham, which is the closest hotel to us, that's about 55 pounds. So 140 pounds is what it costs, 55 pounds Best Western. We then provide you with seven lessons with an expert, a specialist in his or her field, educating you. So you have seven lessons, followed by co-curricular activities or sport. Pretty much anything you can think of will do it. Then there's a tutorial, then there's a clinic, then there's prep, then there are three meals. And actually, I do break it down. I say, why would you, why would you eat pasta, which costs the school nothing, when we're offering you a breast of chicken, which is £2.50? Eat the expensive stuff. Get value for money. I hope this doesn't get into the newspapers. 
As, you know, the, my catering manager will absolutely shred me tomorrow. Um, but actually, James, we do everything that you, you say. Um, and yes, careers. Yes, they should all go off and, and learn the value of money. What does it take? How, what does it feel like working for the, the minimum wage or the living wage? Especially in London. Uh, all my three children have worked for uh, the living wage and they know what that feels like. So get them all out there, get them all working, get them all to understand how difficult it is. And, and start comparing salaries with house prices. And then you'll actually begin to see that school fees are quite reasonable. You know, try living in London, try buying a flat in London. And just to finish off, um, you're right, we're not going to be able to compete on labour, the cost of labour, or the cost of raw material. But what we can compete on, and again, James, this is what you show in your business, is intellectual flair and creativity and entrepreneurial spirit. Something we've been doing at Stowe for 50 years. Richard Branson, who was president of the Old Stoic Society recently, you know, looking at where we can make a difference in business. And I think actually as schools, and I might nick some of your lines for Stowe, but I think as independent schools, we're pretty good at reinventing ourselves. If we weren't, we'd have been out of business a long time ago. So I, I like a lot of what you say, but I disagree with about 90% of it. Do you think that public school children today are massively over-entitled? Can I Do you think they're I, unemployable? Can I just address... Yeah, this is the big question. The, can I just address the four kids in the room? You, you cuddling your mummy, and you two there. Everything I've said today, ignore, it's not important, leave it out. There's just one thing I want to leave you with. Just one single, simple, I'm trying to think of another word beginning with S. I can't, point. And that is... Life is like this. On one, on one axis, hard work, and on the other, success. And the line goes up like that. And that is the only thing I want to tell you kids. The harder you work, the more successful you will be. The harder you work, the more successful you will be. Hard work is an absolute basic. Creativity, Everything comes off that. It is, a, it is basic. It's like breathing. And don't you for a second think that. Now, that doesn't mean to say you have to work hard or you want to work hard. I've got a great friend, and do you know what? He decided to go off and live in a finca in Mallorca, which, uh, which, which was a, st uh, a, 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 a 16th century stone, no running water, no electricity. He grows tomatoes. He has a happy life. He's got kids. He's got a, a, a loo at the end of the... You know, it's great. You, you know, you do not have to be a maniac. But of everything I've said today and of Anthony's points, I cannot stress too much. Through personal experience, through reading, through everything, the harder you work, the more successful you'll be. I think education should be fun. Um, I, I really think you get one chance before we go to the terminal lounge with James and Di. Um, these teenagers, you know, you... It's so short. I mean, I'm 55 now. And you think back to, to the, the turning points in your life. And the things that really matter, the things that stick, are not the, the, the algebraic formulas in, in lessons or the, or the, um, the, the, the periodic table. Uh, it's the, the you know, I, I don't know what sort of time you had at Eton. It doesn't sound like you had a great time. Um, but the, the enjoyment, the fun, the camaraderie, the teamwork, the, the, the wins and the losses. That, to me, is more important. Yes, we need to get our exam results correct. Yes, we need to prepare them for the lives outside schools. But for goodness sake, let's not forget that we're talking about children and, and that you know, they are allowed to make mistakes. They are allowed to fail. They are allowed to get things wrong. I mean, th there is a fundamental philosophy here and I think a, a difference of opinion between the two of us. And uh, I think, yeah, OK, Shackleton, Scott, but without them, we wouldn't have had Antarctic exploration. Um, if you go back to, I'm a historian, look at 1940, the logical thing would have been to make a deal with Hitler to surrender during the Battle of Britain and just let uh, uh, Germany take over most of Europe, Eastern Europe in particular. And we didn't, we took the contrarian view, I think for the right reasons. 
So I, I do think that sometimes you have to do the right thing. You have to be led by character and morality and by a vision of transcendence, which is a little bit above the here and now and becoming rich and quick and famous and having a comfortable living. 20% of adolescents are suffering from some sort of psychological depression at the moment. And this, these aren't just made up statistics. I have four counsellors at the moment working full time on mental health issues. And I'm not unique. I mean, Stowe is a happy school. So my philosophy, and yes, OK, there are some cliches. They're mostly cliches because I wrote the text. And then everyone else started borrowing what I wrote. So now, now I need to obviously rewrite it, James. Um, and then some people can plagiarize it. <laughs> I'll help it. you. Uh, I'll take some of your tips. Uh, the, best, the best state for children is a state, a psychological state called the flow, where you're doing something. You don't even know you're happy when you're doing it. And it could be project work, it could be games, it could be music, but you're really in the moment. And you have that sense of achievement. Probably, I, you know, when you set up the Ministry of Sound, I mean, I know how hard you worked on those projects. I know that that didn't come without uh, quite a lot of, you know, a, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. So, I'm not knocking it, but at the same time, we need to get a balance. And I'm not quite sure that the world, the rather bleak world that James has depicted, is the world that you want to invest your hard-earned capital into the future of your children's education. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Can I? Can I just? Uh Thank you very much, Hank. I think that, that makes a lot of sense. I'll just finish off with one comment only. I think James suggested getting rid of these, these things, right? So I was told by a technical guy the other day that on a typical day, an English child will be exposed to as much stimulus and information and people and pictures as an Edwardian child, not more, much more than 100 years ago, would have seen in his or her entire lifetime. So thank you very much, and what a great talk. <laughs> most, most grateful to you. Thank you.